Naruto was a show I got into as a kid, but not through the anime for the most part, but through the games, namely the PS2 ones. I've actually played almost all of them except for Ultimate Ninja 5, which never got a North American release, which makes sense because I'm pretty sure it came out really late into the PS2 lifetime, and I'm guessing Bandai or whatever didn't think it would be a small decision to release up here, I'm not exactly sure. So, you know, they only got like a, re a European release and a Japanese release. Don't worry, I'll still talk about that, just after I finish talking about all the other ones first, but now back into like the main topic of this video. And in the case of this video, I'll be talking about Uzumaki Conquest 1, and funny enough, I actually didn't play this first, I actually played it after uh, finishing like Uzumaki Conquest 2, just because, you know, I got it at a later time, but in a lot of cases, there's not really much differences between this and Uzumaki Conquest 2. The only major differences, I guess, would be gameplay and story and some modes, but Obviously, I'll get to it when I do, and in case of Loser Monkey Chronicles 1, and in the case of like basically all other Naruto games on the PS2, they had original stories for the most part, at least the 2D ones, but are, are different, but you know, I'll get into it a little bit later. And honestly, the story for this is not really that original, it's been done in Naruto in the actual anime before, it's just more or less Ojimaru wants to destroy Leaf Village, and in this case, he basically gets a bunch of ninja, kills him, and then like just get uses the corpses as like, like as a tool just to like make sure they never die. Okay, like I'm having a hard time explaining this, but it's simple, really. Trust me. The only real downside to the story, in my opinion, other than it being like a basically a rehashed idea, is the fact that it's like really slow to get to. Like you can you will get to the story until like halfway through the game, and it's kind of annoying, but at least. In a lot of cases, there are plenty of fun missions you can do in the game that like maybe can like keep your mind off the story or, or like just whatever to help maybe add to the story a little bit. And honestly, I'll actually get a little bit into that, like the missions and such a little bit later. But now let's talk about one of the big reasons why I kinda like this game is the gameplay. In some cases it can be kinda of boring, but like if you're an Auto fan, I'd say it's pretty enjoyable just because you get to play as Naruto and you get to basically do whatever Naruto does, and that being just spamming Shadow Clones and Rasengan. So, <laughs> so I guess on some level it's kind of fun just being up, no being up enemies and in the, some of the cases the actual bosses just because in the case of the bosses they're all like most of the time just single like enemies inside the area and, and it's not that bad but it just, you know, again, solely relies on just using your Jutsus and then once in a while we're covering, but I will get to the that a little bit later, like the whole how you can recover your HP and such a little bit later, just, you know, talking about the gameplay now. But other than the jutsu that you can do, it's just pretty standard beam up stuff where you have a, a light and heavy attack, and the light attacks are generally just made for like one dude, like if you're fighting him, and then the heavy attacks actually hit a slightly wider range of area, and oh, a little bit stronger just because you know the heavy attacks then you can also string them together to create different combos and you know just again standard beat em up stuff and then another small part of the gameplay or like just some small little uh, thing they added to it was the skill plays and frankly i kind of like it but i'll talk a little bit why i kind of dislike it a little bit later but in this case it can really help with uh adding some stuff like unique stuff to naruto where in this case like you could, like, okay, so he starts off with, like, say, two Shadow Clones, and then you can basically upgrade him to where he can do more Shadow Clones, and then having special techniques that he can do, like, stuff for taking from the show, and then there's also the standard, like, upgrading his health, upgrading his chakra, and then upgrading his, like, Taijutsu attack and Ninjutsu attack, just, you know, the basic general, just upgrading his stats to make him stronger, and, I don't know, I guess in this way it's kind of fun, because throughout the game you can get different, uh, skill plates to where you can fit different kinds of chips and honestly it's kind of fun just to mess around see what you can fit inside the skill plate and then see what you can and just make Naruto a really buff little dude you know going off of the gameplay and the skill plates for now but honestly again as I said before some of the missions are all kind of fun but there will be a lot of filler missions like a lot of it is just go to point A get like a villager or like a prisoner or something but tell them to the leaf village or just stop from the leaf village and go to 
transport something to like say Tasmania or town or whatever and then just th th that's basically it. you just transport missions and those ones are really stupid and I don't like any of them but there are actually some really fun ones in my opinion like one of the ones you actually get though one of them is when you like say go up to a tower and fight Gala at the end and then there was another one where you had to go down to a mine and you find out some really weird shit that Uchimaru was doing and there are a bunch of other ones and I will admit when the missions get good they really do get good and frankly those ones are the ones I remember a lot but at the very least I guess the missions can make you feel like you're actually a part of the show and like you know like cause Again, they, they're ninjas, they do transfer missions and stuff like that. So on some level, it's okay, but it's still annoying. I'm still going to complain about it, so. <laughs> but now we get into some of the reasons why I dislike this game. And frankly, I'm going to start off, this game can be kind of easy at times. And again, that mostly just has to deal with the skill plates and such, where you can upgrade to where you have a lot of health, or you just have lots of like ninja to attack, or tied you to attack and just make yourself really overpowered and then you, you just steamroll through every boss. It may not be on the first playthrough but it'll be on like New Game Plus and yeah this game has New Game Plus so. And also one of the few last things I kinda don't like about this game it's really short. You can probably complete it fully in like an afternoon or something but you know nothing all those things I can look over because you know I, I still love this game. It's a big part of my childhood but I think the biggest thing that I absolutely don't like about this game is the amount of changes that the North American version had and I will say I understand the changes but it's just really annoying after I found out and now I'll just go into why or, or say some of the changes that were in this game and a lot of it just had to come back down to the story and some of the boss fights in the game. For example, the first Kabuto fight was supposed to be Kizama, but obviously the North Americans won't caught up to the Tsunade arc yet. I think at that point we were barely at the tuning exam, like I think we had done the Neji fight at least because I remember uh, Neji, like there's a scene where you fight Neji for the first time, or the only time, I don't know, but like there's a part when he says, oh uh, let's fight, you've changed from the last time we fought and that probably can mean that it's at least around the tuning exam part, but not far enough to actually like have some other stuff because they still have Gawa but it's when he's in the when he's like evil and such so that's a really really annoying thing too and then there's also I think one of the first Gawa fights at the top of the tower I think that was supposed to be Itachi or something or well, I'm not exactly sure I'm not I, I don't know that much I just know that it was changed from either Itachi or Kizme I'm not exactly sure then there were also some cutscene changes where it showed Tsunade as the Hokage instead of having just like the blank uh, Okage room with just like the mission score wheel down well you know in that case they just use oh it's the thought giving you these missions not Tsunade and you know that was kind of lame because we missed out on a lot of cutscenes and the Japanese version actually had a lot more CGI cutscenes well we just got like the hand view that wasn't spoilerish. Then there was also some outfit changes the biggest one I know was Shikamaru's outfit change to well uh because after you know, the tuning exam arc, he became a Chuni and he wore the Chuni outfit. Well, in the North American version, he just wears his get up before like he ever became a Chuni. And I think Gawa's outfit got changed too from uh, from his like normal sound outfit, or uh, not sound, his normal sand outfit to like the one he had when uh, they were chasing off uh, a after Sasuke. And then I think those are the only two outfit changes from my knowledge. But despite all those reasons I still absolutely love this game and honestly I love finding out smaller things about it and even then exploring the game in New Game Plus and all the features that those ones had and I didn't really expect this game to have a New Game Plus which you know it was again a fun addition and again the other fun stuff like the unique missions and I guess the original story as original as it can get and honestly a lot of the Naruto PS2 games in my opinion are kind of classics at least for Naruto games and if you're into it or if you're into Naruto I'd say at least give Uzumaki Chronicles 1 and 2 a chance and again I'll talk about Uzumaki Chronicles 2 a little bit later but even then I still kind of do like the 2D games a little bit more just because I, I, I kind of like 2D fighters a lot and even then the gameplay and the graphics in a lot of the 2D fighters are a little bit better but again that's another video for another time and 
Thank you everyone for watching this video. I'll see you guys later.